it's Robin R. Silent Crafts and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you some of the creative goodness I've been working on this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on the live stream on Friday where I made this card previous to it, but I have a little quick video here of the cards we made together. I don't have them here because I've already mailed them out to a few of you, but this one is going to be going into my postcard monthly subscription thing that's going to be going up on Etsy soon soon I have to have enough of the colors and stuff to give a good representation of what I'm offering so that's going to be going up soon and I just love sewing with scraps and they quilt as you go type scrapping works out really well for the fabric postcards we talked a bit about mailing them and what we use or what I use for the backing what else you can use we talked about doing the stitching around and just generalized sewing what I really like is how you can take scraps, and not just this one, because I don't have the example here to show you, but I took the little trimmings off of some two and a half inch squares I think I was working with, or some charm squares, or whatever they were from. I sewed them all together in a long length like you would for binding or for a jelly roll race, and I put them diagonally. And the point I'm trying to get to in a long about way is a lot of times if you just put your scraps going up and down horizontal or vertical it's just kind of like ho-hum but just adding a little bit of a diagonal section to it or stripes to it it just changes up the way a postcard looks. I also talked how I took my fusible fleece and I franken-pieced it. You can see all of my zigzag stitching and just like I do it for the batting and such like that, but this time I wanted to use up those bits of fusible fleece. Fusible fleece is not cheap, it's not inexpensive. So I wanted to make sure that I used up the bits that I had because some of it was quite large pieces and it just wasn't going to work for other projects like coin purses, but it's perfect for a fabric postcard. Especially when you do the quilt as you go like this, you're never going to know what's underneath there and whether or not it's been pieced. It's why I also pieced the batting strips for these. Don't know if I showed this to you last week, but for the upcoming 50,000 subscriber giveaway, thank you for the new subscribers. Once I hit 50,000 subscribers, I'm going to have a giveaway and I'm going to offer two mini quilts that you can choose which one you like. Cause I thought about doing the two just in case someone didn't like the flamingos, they would have another option. So I did make a spool and scissor mini quilt. Of course, it still needs to be quilted. It's just a flimsy. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this. So that one is finished. I plan on making more because it's a really quick and easy project. For me, most of the time is just cutting out the pieces because you do have some small-ish pieces. They're not really small for this project just to make all the little stitch and flip bits on the scissors. The actual spools, there's really nothing to it. You can see where all of the seams are, so it doesn't take much time. This is a pattern that I purchased. It's something that Pat Sloan's been doing on a quilt along. I've been saying her name a lot lately because I watch her every day. She has daily videos, well, almost daily videos. And this is something they were doing as a quilt along and she really did twist my arm and influence me to pick up this pattern because it's a fun little mini quilt. And the entire quilt also is really pretty. I'll try to add some links down below to where I purchased the patterns for the variety of things that I'm showing. Now this is Florence Flamingo. This was given to me as a gift. This one's by Elizabeth Hartman. She does a lot of the animal quilts. Another project that I showed on Instagram. Just to give you a good view of it, this is how large it is. So I took the individual quilt block for the flamingo and I just added some wide borders on it just to make it into a full-size mini quilt or wall hanging at this point. Now if you look at my Instagram post, as soon as I put the picture up and I went to double check that it all posted properly, I looked at it and I thought, oh no. I tried to get the feet and everything to line up properly and then make sure everything looked nice. It's one of those things where sometimes the pattern is sewn in a certain way and it doesn't look like it's going to line up but when you sew it together it lines up nicely so as soon as i looked at the picture i thought oh no that one foot didn't line up so i had to go back through and take this foot so i just popped this seam right here 
and I just moved it around and just, it was only off by a little, but because it's a foot attached to a leg, you kind of notice if it's off just by, you know, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch or something. But I was able to just shift it enough and restitch it so that it actually looks like the foot is at the bottom of the legs. Now here, if it's just a little bit off, you're not going to notice it. But if you check out my Instagram, it just popped right away. My eye caught it right away just because it had white where you would expect a leg and a foot to be. I used my white on white for the background with the lines and I knew there was no way I was going to be able to sit there and, well, I mean, I could. I would have to painstakingly think through every little piece that I cut to make sure it was all going in the same direction. But then I just thought, you know what, I'm not gonna do that. However it turns out, it turns out. And I really like the way it looks for the background. It gives it like, there's that wallpaper that has the the texture going one way and another and it just goes in different vertical and horizontal ways and it makes a nice wallpaper backdrop and I think that's from like maybe the 70s or something. So it just it has a nice texture and really a lot of it has to do with paint color based on what decade we refer it to. But I thought it just added a nice look to it. Again, if you check out my Instagram, you can see it hanging up here on my chrome curtain. I needed somewhere to hang it up that was a nice empty spot so that you could actually see what it looks like. But then you can see the pattern in the background and it just gives it a nice good texture, almost like brush strokes on a painting or something, but it was really fun. And I left a comment on it or I put it in my little description box there that wouldn't it be fun to have a whole bunch of pink crumb blocks to border one more time around this to finish it off. So I have to go look at my supplies and see, see if I have enough. I won't be doing it for this one for the giveaway, but I do wanna make some for myself. So I was thinking that it might be nice to put a little crumb border around it for the one that I wanna make for myself. This part of the flamingo is always white. As far as I know, any flamingo I've ever seen has always been white. So with the white background, I was a little worried that it might blend in. And when you're really up close, and you're looking at it and you're like, oh, well, okay, because it's a different texture and a different kind of white fabric. But when you come back and you see it hanging, your eyes connect everything so you can actually see that white part of the bill in the face. So it does, it does work out really well. But that's something to think about for any more that I make. I have to be careful on how I choose the backgrounds and stuff like that. I started a new work routine, a new schedule for myself. Monday through Friday, I work out all video stuff except live stream days because that's a really, it's not an intense day, but there's a lot of preparations ahead for it. So I take Fridays off, but that's only twice a month, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, I saved the weekends for just fun sewing or Etsy sewing. So I purchased a pattern. Again, I'll try to link everything down below. If there's something missing and I forgot to link it, just remind me in the comments and I'll put a link up but I've been wanting to make a cell phone pouch. Now I have a video for cell phone pouches. I'll try to put that in the pinned comment, but I wanted something a little different. That one is an actual pouch that goes this way. And I did purchase a pattern for one that way because I wanted the curved flap and I just wanted someone else to do the work for me. So it was on a really good, it was like 55% off sale or something on Etsy. So I grabbed a pattern for that. But there's really a big difference between quilters who make bags and bag makers. And I've been in some bag maker forums on Etsy and the groups and stuff. And I, I found that they like patterns. They like, even if it's a, a four by five rectangle, they want someone to put that in the pattern so that they can trace around a four by five rectangle because they don't use like rotary cutters and quilt rulers like a quilter type person will. So the pattern for the one that has the flap is this really long pattern. It's like 33 inches long. And they have this technique where you fold it up origami style and it turns into a little fold over cell phone pouch. And I thought, okay, I tried it and I looked at it and I cut the fabric and that was definitely not for my brain to process. So I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna rework the pattern like I always do or usually do. I didn't have to rework this one at all that I'm gonna show you in a minute. So I'm gonna have to rework that one and come up with a different one. But this one, I have my son's old cell phone in here. It has a little cam snap holder. So it fits a cell phone, no problem. I'm recording on my cell phone, so I couldn't show you mine. I have an iPhone 14 plus, I guess it's called, in a, 
uh, what is it, an, an OtterBox case, and it fits in here no problem, just to give you an idea of the size of this pocket. Of course, you can use this for other reasons if you don't want to put a cell phone in it, but it's one of my favorite things. It's a zipper pouch, so you could put your wallet or just some cards and keys and some money in here. I didn't add any pockets. I'm not sure if I'm going to add any pockets in the future, but I might. But for right now, I'm just going to make them as a regular zipper pouch. It has the handle and then, of course, the little pocket. And it has a cam snap. First time I've done a two color one. So with this fabric, I put a white cam snap. And then with this fabric, I used a black one just so that neither one of them sticks out very much in the overall project. So there's the back. So this was my first one. I wanted to see how does it go together? Do I need to change anything? Do I understand the pattern? So I did went through all of that and it's really straightforward. So I can use this in any way that I'd like and change things up. As this pattern is, I didn't see the need to take anything and make it like a scrappy or a quilt block or anything on it. You could put a little something on the back, but really this works perfectly fine with just normal fabric, all and normal fabric meaning all in one piece and not quilted. The pattern called for fusible fleece and that's what I used and it worked out really well. So after making one, now these two still need their cam snaps. I ran out of time yesterday on Sunday to get them done, but I went and made it out of this fabric. And the handle is removable. So you can detach it if you want to just like throw this into your purse or your tote bag or backpack. Really, I am capable of using a lobster clasp. I made the handle a little bit longer. So just in case someone has a larger hand you, or you want it to be a little bit more comfortable. I know some people might have arthritis and their hands swell up or they have a hard time moving their hands a certain way. I wanted to make sure the strap was large enough for everyone. This calls for a bit of a bigger tab here. So in the next ones, I'm going to be shortening this up. This one isn't too bad, but I noticed this morning when I was looking at them before making this video, that it's just a little bit longer than I'd like. So there is the closure. So it's going to go over. I like adding the contrast fabric here. And then I just follow the pattern and it said to use the same outer fabric for everything. This one, I did the contrast. But I thought, you know what? It's a nice, subtle look. I went with a creamy grunge fabric on the inside. So it's a nice, subtle look. So you can carry it around and not stand out because not everyone wants to stand out. So depending on your fabric choices, it can just change on how it is. So there is this one. It's happy, dream, hope, and all of those fun words on it. And then I made one with a gray seashell fabric big contrast so we're just waiting on a button my cam snaps right now are only white and black so that's I'm limited on what I'm going to use but generally that works out pretty well I used to buy all of the colors of the cam snaps so I could put a purple on a purple and a green on a green like that and stuff but I find it's just easier to buy in bulks of 100 200 500 cam snaps of just the white and the black because really they will work on anything there is the larger strap. I also sew my straps a little bit different than they do. I sew these bits a little bit different than they do. It all ends up the same in the end. You just make whatever works for you, right? You make it the way it works. And then in the inside, I have that white on white fabric. So by the time you see this video, all three of these should be in the shop. If not, again, give me a little nudge down in the comments. Today's grocery shopping day, I have to actually leave the house. So I think I'm gonna make myself one like this out of my flamingo fabrics. And because whenever I go certain places, sometimes I'm just gonna to run to the store. Like today, I'm going to do a Walmart pickup, so I don't need to get out of the car for that. But I also need to go to Publix for one item, Sam's for one item, and I need to hit the Dollar Tree. Thankfully, everybody's a mile and a half from my house, and they're all just in like a half mile from each other. So I just, I'll make a circle. I'll leave my house and I'll do Publix, 
Sam's, Walmart, Dollar Tree, and I'll circle back home and come home. It's going to be different when we go to Arizona and things aren't going to be really close to me. I always plan things to do all my errands in one day anyways. I just won't be so lucky that I'm only traveling like a three mile circle. But this is going to be great because when I go to like the doctor or the dentist, or as I said, grocery shopping, when you sit down at the doctor or the dentist, you don't have your phone with you. You have to put it somewhere. And I'm not going to always put it in like my pocket, especially in a dentist chair when you're moving in all the different positions and stuff. Not that the dentist does weird things, but you know, you're sitting up and you're laying down a phone in your pocket. It's not comfortable. So I can pop my phone in here or you can pop it in here too, because if you want it to be more secure, it does fit in here. So it might be a little bit tighter with some phones. If you needed one to fit a phone that you have specifically, you can always let me know the phone size and I can make sure that if you wanna put it in the zipper section that it will fit your phone. For this one, I'm, it fits fine. I might want to add just an extra inch to it just for comfort to make sure. But I would put a wallet in here. I could put my keys in there, but I always keep those in my pocket. And then I could pop my cell phone here and that way, I'll know where everything is and it'll just be in one little quick thing and with the wrist strap it just makes everything easy to hold on to and take wherever you want. I also purchased a pattern for a crossbody bag. I'd like to make myself a nice little crossbody bag and I can make any type of crossbody bag and it's really easy to make that up as you go. But again, this bag had a nice little curve to the top. I'm terrible with curves. I really should pick up the clothing makers. Excuse me, I have the hiccups. The clothing makers and the dressmakers have this tool. It's like a snake and you can just bend it to create the curves you want. So I think I probably should pick up something like that so I can make a nice even curve. I tried to fold the paper in half and cut it. I've tried tracing over plates and different things and just doing all the measurements and stuff. And it just doesn't come out nice for me. Some of us do things naturally and some of us struggle and that's not my strong point. So I'm willing to pay for a designer to create something for me. So of course I need to do a test of it first in just regular everyday type fabric. You know, if I wanted to make it in the shell fabric or something and then turn one into a flamingo one for myself. I've never made a crossbody strap before, so that's something new. I've been watching videos for that. Enough about me and my bags. Let me show you something that came in the mail this week. This is called a chatelaine. If you guys aren't familiar with that, this is like an old Victorian type thing. You wear it around your neck, so when you're sitting there out in your fancy chairs in the parlor in front of the fire or out on the porch and you're doing all your stitching because they did a lot of things by hand, of course. A lot of people made their clothing by hand. I, oh, my needle broke. I need a new needle. Well, I can go in here and I can pull out a needle. Oh, I need to snip a thread. Well, I'll go in here and pull out, pull out some scissors. So let me show you what this one is. I'll pull everything out and show you what came in it. I think this is a great gift from a sewing friend to a sewing friend. So these are to clean your machine. I love these plastic Q-tippy type things. I have some from Quilt in a Day. They're on my wish list on Amazon permanently because I use them all the time. So I just pop in and grab them when I need them and then you know, use them to clean my machine. Sorry, my hair caught my eye. I need to get a haircut, but that is definitely not on today's list. And then it has the bristle ones too. I haven't used the bristle ones. They have little sparkly handles, so that'll be fun to try out. A glue stick, Elmer scented glue stick. It's a mango pineapple. I didn't know you can get a mango pineapple glue stick. It doesn't smell nice, to be honest with you. It has a perfumey smell. And it kind of smells like the mango or the pineapple set on the counter too long and it got a kind and it got kind of nasty smelling. But you know what? It's gonna work perfectly fine. And as you're using this, I've tested it out. As long as you're not sitting here smelling it like this, it doesn't have a big scent to it when you're using it. So there's a tape measure with a little genie in the bottle. And I have to tell you, it, this is the cutest thing. Why? Because the person who sent to me sent this to me, her name is Jeannie. So there's a little Jeannie in the bottle. So there's her little symbol. Oh, this has got a nice one. It's got black numbers on it. I'm so used to red ones. 
So that's a machine applique. Nope, it's machine embroidery. Foldable scissors, because we always need those either by the machine or in our project bags. So it's good to have it in there. I have a pin cushion. There's a little bottle to put the oil in. So when you're oiling in your machine, you don't have a, not that there's a big bottle that you're using, but it's nice and precise. Here's a little sample of faultless iron cleaner. So now I have two different kinds of iron cleaner that I can test out on my irons. She gave us a list of everything so we know exactly what we have in here. Oil bottle, oil bottle works perfect for precise drops. So that's great. Whoops. So there's a little sleep <laughs> words this morning. There is a cloth for cleaning the screen, whether it's on your phone or your tablet or your computer or your sewing machine. Because you know, a lot of our computerized sewing machines have it. And you have to have a fuzzy pen. I thought it was a pencil. It's a fuzzy little guy. I always loved these as a kid. Anything fuzzy like this was always one of my favorites. I like the ones with the troll dolls with their hairs like on there. There's a purple thing. I've never used a purple thing, but I've seen them and it just seems like a great tool. So I'm about to watch some more videos to see its potential. You're looking at it, you're like, Robin, that's just a piece of purple plastic, but it's great. It's got a little hook on end to it. You can use it to sew with, and then it's got a little thing to press it and there's a hole in it. So I don't know if you can put it through to do drawstrings. I have to look and see, but there's a lot of fun things for that. The little hookies here, I don't know what you use them for when you're sewing, but I use these little light bulb things for stitch markers when I'm knitting. This is a surgical seam ripper. They are extremely sharp and they work great at just slicing through the seam. You just have to be careful because again, it's extremely sharp. So we keep that covered and put that away so we don't cut ourselves or I don't cut myself. So then you can see all of the fun bright fabrics because you know I love the bright fabrics. I always also love the ones with the, oh wait, I missed something. There's my pins. You have to have pins for your pin cushion. So these have butterflies and flowers and buttons and bows. So those are really cute. Let me make sure I showed you everything. Oh, mini safety pins is what she's calling that. Purple thing, straight pin, screen cloth, oil butter, glue stick, cleaning brushes. Oh, there are makeup wands, but work great for cleaning the sewing machine. Iron cleaner, fuzzy pen, razor for a seam ripper. Caution, it's crazy sharp. So that's great. She made these for several people from the Talk To Me Tuesday. If you guys have been here for a while, you'll remember Talk To Me Tuesday. This Whip It Wednesday series is what took its place. So I think this is great. You can wear this around your neck while you're doing anything. Even if you're knitting and crocheting, this would still work, hand embroidery, or you can hang it up nearby wherever you're sewing or whatnot so you have everything within reach. So thank you so much for my Chatelaine. It's a C-H-A Tulane thing type thing in it. It's a really old fashioned name, but a lot of modern things. I've actually had one of these on my mind for a pattern. Rob and I were actually designing one and I just hadn't figured out yet exactly what I wanted for. I knew I was gonna make it out of fabric. Some people do it out of ribbon. And I just hadn't decided on the width and where I wanted to put pockets and such. So this is a great example if you'd like to make your own. I'm sure there are videos here on YouTube on how to make them, but really it's simple enough to figure out on your own. I received one many years ago that I have just hanging here. This is the one that Rob and I, we were looking at that we thought was really kind of smart. It has a pin cushion here, a little pocket for your scissors to go in. Those are too big for some small scissors and then just a simple ribbon that goes around your neck. And this was meant for people that do a lot of like EPP. This came with a little EPP swap I was in. So I've had this just hanging up here for all of these years. This is many, many years old. So I really need to motivate and get working on that. But until then, I have this amazing one to work on. Thank you so much. 
So your scrappy word for today is fuzzy. Did you have one of these fuzzy pens or pencils when you were in school? I feel like this was very 80s. We had a lot of these. Lisa Frank had a lot of things like this. And Lisa Frank has come back out to be very popular again with the kids and with the adults. Because most of us from the 80s and stuff, we remember having the notebooks and the little fuzzy characters like this. I love the funky little eyes. So I thought I'd give you a little advance notice of what's coming out on Friday. On Friday, I have a video for single fold binding. I've been doing so many single fold binding projects with my patrons and with some of the things that I've just been doing myself for fun. So I thought I would do an updated version. I did one a few years ago on a little fabric postcard. It's a little bit harder to show on a little fabric postcard. So I have a nice in-depth, you know me, very tips and tricks and talkative and showing everything because I wanted to make it very beginner friendly. Sometimes when I do a video, I just want to say, here, here's a zipper pouch. This is how we're going to make this version. I want to show you how to put a tassel on. So something quick and easy. And other times I want to be very beginner friendly and I want to say, okay, this is what I did. This is how I cut it. Let me show you how I sew it. Let me show you how I iron it and step by step by step. So I'm going to show you nothing to do with fabric postcards, but there will be a single fold binding tutorial coming up. I have fallen in love with single fold binding. It is great for the mini quilts, for smaller projects, for mug rugs. It just works for me. It uses less fabric. And the process really isn't as hard as you might think. Sure, the double fold, two and a half inch, two and a quarter binding, slap it on, fold it over, stitch it down is really easy. But the single fold is just has a little extra step and I find it quite easy and the corners aren't as difficult as they look. So I'll be looking forward to showing you that on Friday. I hope you guys catch that video and thank you for watching. Remember, we are doing the 50,000 subscriber giveaway. So if you would like to win the flamingo or the spool mini quilt, I will start working on getting these put together. What do I want to do? I want to put the batting and backing and what am I calling it? Um, basting. I need to start basting these and getting them ready for quilting. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you guys on Friday. Bye.